Hey guys, what's up? Uh, sorry it's been a while. I've just been adjusting and starting a new job and just trying to figure things out. Um, but I didn't forget you. And yeah, I just wanted to jump on and just kind of preface the next video. Um, it's not one of the easiest to put together. Um, part of the reason I went back to the States uh, this summer was to take care of my dad's ashes. Um, I lost my dad last year, the day after my birthday. So, August 22nd last year. And unfortunately, I didn't find out right away. And um, I found out in an airport on a layover to a destination that a lot of people would consider a paradise. <clears throat> and it could have been, but it wasn't. Um, so this video is going to be a bit of a throwback um, to last year when I, when I found out about my dad and um, the experience that I had. And then also the second part of my journey home, uh, setting him free. And it, yeah, like I said, it wasn't the easiest thing I've ever done, um, but I was blessed to be able to do it. And my dad's a complicated story. He was a good man and I loved him very much. That being said, my parents split when I was young, and a lot of my personal issues stem from my dad. And I don't mean like as a person, as a malicious, he wasn't malicious. Um, but I was always chasing and seeking a love from him that he wasn't capable of, and I didn't understand that. And that's resulted in abandonment issues, dad issues, men issues, trust issues, a lot. A lot of issues, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm full of issues, I'm just saying that the, the things that I do battle with personally, a lot of them stem from that strained relationship with my dad, a relationship that I was desperately seeking that I never... I never got. And it's not because he didn't want it, but I think it's because he wasn't capable. But that being said, my dad and I were, we were good friends. We enjoyed each other. We loved each other. We had a lot in common and he gave me his hands. These are my dad's hands. Exactly. And I got his hair. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a minute and, and preface it a little bit. It's a lot a lot to process, but I'm hoping through this video that it will help me to heal and grow and to, to connect to people that might suffer from some of the same issues that I do. You know, um, being a parent isn't easy and there's no handbook on what to do. And being a child is also not easy. Right? You see your friends have these relationships with their parents and you think that that's what everybody should have. And if you don't, you're lacking something or you're less than. Um, I grew up with a single mom in a time when that was the minority. Um, the majority of my friends came from married households, two-income households. Um, they didn't have a parent that was an addict. I did. And that's okay. But it's taken me a long time to navigate these emotions and the feelings and the lasting effects of not growing up with two parents, with having a parent that was an addict, that having a parent who wasn't capable of the love I thought that I deserved and that I needed. So I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I'm just, I'm just reaching out to those people who 
might have dad issues. Like, I see you. You're not alone, and your feelings are valid. Your grief is valid. My grief and feelings, they're valid. You know, and I need to remind myself that, and I need to be gentle with these things. Like, I've experienced a lot when I've been abroad, and unfortunately, that includes death. Death of a parent, death of a best friend, death of an aunt, death of some uncles, death of... The list goes on and on. So as much as I love the life that I have and the lifestyle that I've chosen, it's not always easy. It's not always smiles and adventure and happiness. Sometimes it translates as grief and sadness and the feeling of being alone. Um, But through sadness, there's always a silver lining. There's always a lesson to be learned. And through through the death of my dad, I was lucky enough to meet one of the best people I've ever met. Um and experience some of the greatest things I've ever done. So, yeah, the video is definitely not all sad. Um, There's a lot of happiness. And there's one thing that I'm sure of, and that my dad was proud of me. And that he loved me to the best of his ability. And I'm grateful for that. So, um, yeah, so through the tears, there's laughter and, and through the hurt there's so much love so I just wanted to to throw some of that out there and identify with with men and women that are feeling the similar things that I am because I know I'm not alone and if I'm feeling this then maybe you are too so if I can reach you I'm happy to do it dude I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had and that the support and the love that my dad did give me and I was honored to be able to finally set him free so here is my visit home part two and also a flashback to 15 or 16 or so months ago Um, yeah so that's it I hope you enjoy it Um, and I'm sending a big hug and a lot of love to all of you so thank you for tuning in Uh, thanks for being part of my journey giving me the love and confidence to keep doing this. It's weird for me still. Um, I haven't quite got to the point where I just video my my everyday life, Um, but I'm getting more comfortable and your words of kindness and amazing comments that you guys leave, I just, I I appreciate it so much. So thanks for your continued support and uh, I hope that I can continue to inspire and just touch you, just just give you guys an experience that you wouldn't otherwise have, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, and uh, here's the, the final journey of my pops, sending you lots of love. So on May 15th, I left India after spending four years in the pandemic. Um, I stayed in India by choice, and it was really a life-changing experience. I'm going to highlight India in some future videos. But I left India and I flew to Phuket, Thailand. Um, Thailand is kind of my safe spot. I spent a lot of years there um, in my 20s. And it was really, really, really important to me to go back to Thailand after I quit drinking. Um, The first time I was in Thailand, it was amazing, incredible. I moved there when I was 26. And I stayed with my ride or die, Amanda, and we, we were on top of the world. Um, we were partying, we were having so much fun. Um, it was a time that I, I cherish. It was one of the best times of my life. Um, but I was young, and I partied, and that's what I did. So this time I came back to Thailand sober um, with a different perspective. And I needed a safe spot to land after India. Um, the final months in India were really hectic, really hard. Um, parts of it were traumatic. So coming back to Thailand was something that was safe. Um, I was going back to the same school group that I taught at years before. And 
yeah, Thailand is kind of my home away from home. So, upon leaving India, I went to Thailand. And I was working there for some months. Um, unfortunately, there were some visa paperwork issues. So I needed to find something else. Um, but before I found something else, I did have a chance to explore some of the beauty of Thailand. And as you can see in the video, the landscape between leaving New Delhi and landing in Phuket, uh, it's just, it's a trip. Um, so yeah, I went to Thailand and I was starting to heal. Heal from a lot of things and I'll, I'll highlight that because I think that it's really relatable. I know I'm not the only one to deal with hardship and, and, and trauma, um, but I'll save that for another video. I just wanted to highlight um, a few things on this journey between finding out my dad passed and, and setting him free. So, one of my favorite things about Thailand are the markets. And I know Susie really loves markets, so oh I want to highlight, highlight the experience. So this is just the typical market. Yeah, I was in Koh Lai. So Koh Lai yes, is just right. north of the island of Koh Lai. Literally like 15 minutes from the bridge crossing from Koh Lai. Uh, it's a small Muslim fishing village primarily. Stuff in bags. This is just like normal. Everything's in a bag. This isn't the tourist spots. These are where people go to do their local shopping. Whoa, and I always like to look at what they have. Um, I mentioned before I don't eat meat, so the meat part is a little bit tough. But I still enjoy looking at it. I don't know what everything is. Um, I forgot. But it's fresh and Chicken. it's a cool experience. So there's something special about the markets in Thailand. Uh, if you ever get the chance, you definitely have to go to the night markets. Uh, they're usually in different locations on different days. This one particularly is, let me try to remember, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, I believe. Um, but yeah, they, they fan the flies away. They have fans for themselves because it's so hot. Oh, they serve squid every on a type stick. of meat on a stick. I forgot about squid on a stick. Yeah, all sorts of bits and bobs. Oh my god, salmon. Fresh veg. And um, intestines. <laughs> a lot of miscellaneous. They love fried god, things. So many things on sticks. There are all sorts of sausages on sticks. Um, Nothing on a stick. Yeah, they also sell all right, like let's clothing see what I can and cosmetics. Find. Knock off bags, knock off shoes, whatever you can think of, you usually can find in the market. Uh, and it's always a fun experience. Um, another thing about Phuket that I love is the beach. Alright, the nice thing about this location is it's close to Phuket, but without the people, without all the tourism and, and the sex industry and all of those things that Thailand also has. Um, so many of my days were spent on the beach. If I wasn't at the beach, I was probably finding one of these beautiful Muslim pancakes. Um, yeah, this guy made amazing banana chocolate pancakes. Um, if you're on a diet, maybe you don't eat these, but even if you are, you should probably try one because they're just that good. Um, yeah, I can't recommend them enough. You can get savory ones as well, but I'm always going to go for the sweet. Yeah, give me all the Nutella. Um, there I did have a lovely Thai teacher, and he was so sweet and sent me off on my way as I embarked on my new adventure in the Maldives. So I got a job in the Maldives, and I was hired to work on a local island to teach English and do a community development project. Um, so I left Thailand and I flew to Bangkok, where I had my layover. And everything was good. I was so excited. I'm, I'm going to, to paradise, right? People dream of the Maldives. And I was no different. So here I am, a night in the airport, and I wake up, and the phone rings. And it's my cousin. And that's when I got word that, that my dad passed away. Right as my flight was boarding. So I got on the plane numb. Numb on the way to paradise. 
How is it possible to be going to a place that people dream about, but feeling so sad? You know, my dad and I had an interesting relationship because he was a good man. I love, I love my dad, and he loved me, but he was not a traditional dad. I didn't have a Leave It to Beaver up bringing uh, my parents split when I was four. But my dad was always kind of around because I played sports. So he would come to my games, we would go to sporting events together, and that was really our, our connection. Um, and my dad was proud of me. He didn't know where I was. Geography wasn't his strong point. But it didn't matter where I was, because he was always proud of me. But it felt different. He, he didn't show he was proud of me in the way that I thought a dad would show it. And I didn't know it at the time. Um, I grieved my dad's body a long time before his soul left his human form. So... As I was just smacked with grief, flying into paradise, I also felt joy because I knew that he was proud of me. I knew he would want me to keep going. And so no, I didn't run home. He was gone. His soul was no longer in the ashes, in the remains, in anything. So I continued my trip to Mali. from Malay I was going to embark on, on the local island and here I am arriving in, in paradise with one of my favorite people gone and it hurt and it still hurts but he was proud of me so I kept going I did it for him, I did it for me you know and, and I don't regret it as you can see in this picture, <laughs> this is the last time I saw him, five years before. Um, but he loved me. There he is in the suit with the black jacket. And as I landed to a new job, I had to let them know, you know? My dad had passed, so I'm sorry I'm a bit of a mess. The emotion is real. And I went to get food. And at the restaurant, the waiter followed me and locked the door. And I had to escape. So now I'm experiencing grief and, and sexual, potential sexual abuse in a place where I just felt so alone. But I had the company behind me. My coworkers were aware that I just lost my dad. Um, and I got a message from one of them just sending some condolences after a cheeky comment about the weather. Because when I arrived, it just started pouring. And uh, he said, wow, nice time to arrive. It's pouring rain, blah, blah. You know, uh, and then he came back and was like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that was a little harsh. Um, and little did I know that that was the beginning of what's turned out to be a really incredible friendship. Um, I met one of my people. And he helped me so much because I was dealing with just so much on a tiny island in the middle of the ocean in a conservative country and I could have been on Mars. It looks like paradise, but it felt like Mars. Um, but through tragedy, there's triumph and I'm gonna highlight more of that as I go along. But I wanted to, sh I really wanted to make this video Partially for healing, but partially for awareness of grief. Grief takes many faces, and everybody deals with it differently. Um, and here I am in paradise, dealing with the death of a parent. And uh, yeah, it was it was it was interesting. So I landed in Edafushi, the local island, and holy Hannah, it was stunning. It was physically stunning, but there's pain in my eyes. I felt guilty for being in paradise and feeling sad. 
There was such a range of emotions. So through the pain, I still smiled. I watched the sunset in the evenings. I, I looked to the sky and I expressed my gratitude that I was hurting. But how can I hurt in this place? This is what dreams are made of. But for me, this is where one of the biggest tests for me took place. I'm alone. There's no people really around. So I spent my days picking up trash. So I could send a message to the community, I'm here to help. But I was hurting. I was here to teach. But they weren't welcoming. But, th but through that feeling, I still found joy. I still found beauty. I had a community in India donate on my father's behalf to the Dalai Lama Trust. And I met one of my people, the tall, lanky one to my left. And I met these amazing people at the one coffee shop that treated me like a human. But unfortunately, the program I was hired for didn't have enough participants, so I was forced to leave again. And that's when I called Susie. And I said, Susie, Nepal or Sri Lanka? And she says, Libs, I've dreamt of Sri Lanka, but I don't think I'll ever get there. And I said, well, Suze, I'm going to go for both of us. And, a rainbow and as I left the Maldives that guys, day, good omen. there was a rainbow shining When I left bright. Thailand, there was also a rainbow. And I knew well, that I made the right decision. That. And I landed in Colombo. Susie, it's for you, my love. Sri Lanka was life-changing, so much so that I'm going to highlight a lot of that in the next video. But we're going to fast forward a year. And I made it home. And I spent time with my friends. And now it was time to set my dad free. So we got cremated a year prior. And my mom graciously took care of that for, for me on my behalf. And when I went home, it was really important that I gave him the send-off. You know? And that's what I did. So we picked a day that started a little rainy. But as we found our spot, the clouds cleared, and I was able to, to give my pops his final send-off. So that's what I did on the Oregon coast on a beautiful September day, and here, here's that journey. the old pops' ashes. Wish me luck. <laughs> Ship balls headed to the beach. Down to the ocean. Alright. Well, Dad, I love you, and uh, I'm honored I get to do this for you. It sucks. Well, you know, it's one thing we're not going to escape. So, Dad, it's our last trip together. I love you. I hope your soul is set free and your next life is better. You know, it was a pleasure to be your kid. and Thanks. I miss you every day. And I love you. for a prettier place, really. So, <clears throat> fly high, Pops. I love ya. There you go, Dad. The Oregon coast with the Yankees, the Black Hills, Oregon, and your daughter. I love you eternally, and may you be free, Pops. You're free of suffering. You're finally free, Dad. I'm happy. I love you. Here comes the water to wash you away. Take care, Dad. I'll see you in the next life. Beautiful day for a send-off on the Oregon coast. And so here's the beautiful Oregon coast distance that's the 
Head Lighthouse, Pacific Ocean, and some lesbians having a photo shoot. Beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Alright, I just wanted to say thank you all for tuning into that video. Um, I just watched it myself and I had a good cry. Sometimes grief comes out of nowhere. You know, most days I'm good, but some days I'm not. And I think that's, that's normal. Um, your feelings are valid. We hear you. I hear you. I relate to you. Um, but just remember, man, people are going through a lot. And even though it looks really good on the outside, or like paradise, or perfection, or oh my god, she's so lucky, and I am, but it doesn't mean I don't hurt, right? So as good as it looks on the outside, sometimes it's really painful on the inside, so uh, just a little reminder to, to check on your friends, um, to ask how they're doing, to be there if they need you, because uh, it's not easy to navigate things alone, and... I know I'm not alone, but sometimes it feels like it, right? So uh, just check in, say hi. Not just to me, to everybody, because a lot of us carry things that nobody knows about. And it's important to, to speak out and to find people that understand and that, that relate to you. So um, with all that being said, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to show you more about India and Sri Lanka and the cool story with Sean. And he's from Coventry, so any of you from Coventry, maybe you know him. Uh, shout out to the Julians. Um, yeah, he's just a good dude. So anyways, I have so much more to say, but I just wanted to take the time to say thanks for tuning in. And um, have a great day. Take care.